Hey guys, how are you? I'm Rod Kaiser. Today in this video, we're going to show you how to reproduce missing parts on furniture. So oftentimes you're working on a piece of furniture, you might have it at home, and or you might be working on it for a client or whatever the situation be. You might be missing something like this, you might be missing something like this. Okay, you see that? You might be missing this, you might be missing this, pieces of molding, all kinds of different railings and moldings and stuff. So you don't have the ability to you know, refabricate them. What we do is we make molds and I'm going to show you today how to make a mold and cast one of these parts so that you can make this out of this. Today we're going to make, and I'm going to take you all through all the steps of doing this. Um, we're going to make a mold. Um, this one right here actually uh, for a music cabinet, but again, you can do anything like anything all kinds of stuff Right, and I make a lot of molds. I, I mean like This is like We just make all kinds of stuff if it's, if something's missing a leg that was a little bit of a leg this was Who knows what that was? Um, this looks like again. This looks like it was part of a leg this is a part of a rung for just a rung for a chair piece of molding you know things that you're just not going to make very easily it's going to be really difficult to make these um, out of uh, wood this is really a fancy applique actually and you know what happens with in especially in our business a piece of a foot um, this is sort of like this but smaller I mean it just like is endless right I was made that so what happens is, you know, we get a lot of jobs in here and you come across a lot of furniture that's missing a piece, missing a part. And it's always, they're always cheaper too. Those pieces that are missing something, you can get those for a lot less money. And it, you know, it seems like a, you know, a tall mountain to, to climb, to remake these things. But really just casting a mold is simple stuff. And when like we're pricing jobs uh, for refinishing, typically the money is not there to re carve and reproduce something like that out of wood so we just make molds and we cast the piece out of a mold and color it and it becomes an exact replica typically far better than I could I personally could ever carve anyway so I could never do this I literally could never do that all right so this gives us an opportunity to do it and do it at a, at a really reasonable price so I'm going to show you today how we're going to go ahead and fabricate a couple missing parts we're literally only going to have you know maybe about an hour or two hours wrapped up in these parts yet they seem like it's a big deal it seems like especially to the customers they're always like blown away how, how perfectly you replicated it when in fact it's really not anything difficult at all so I hope you enjoy this video um, and we're gonna we're gonna jump right into this and we're gonna reproduce some parts on a nice old antique an old music cabinet was in the family uh, I think the grandfather made it so it had tons of sentimental value to the family they didn't want us to do any refinishing they just wanted us to preserve and restore the original finish put it back together because it was in pieces and make a couple parts that were missing Okay, so this is the piece that we are going to reproduce today. And I'm going to be using this silicone putty. It's uh, a mold making um, silicone. And it comes in, as you can see, two, two different parts. There's a part A and a part B. And we're going to mix them basically equal proportions, 50% of each. It's not an, a real exact science. So you just take what looks to be very close to 50% and you mix them together. Now when you mix them, you want to make sure that you know they're really well mixed together and that you get one solid color when it's uh, you know, when you're when you're done kneading it and mixing it. So I'm going to mix this compound together really well until I get one uniform color and then I'm going to start to apply it to the piece that I want to mold. Now I want to warn you that you need to work fast 
because once you start mixing the two compounds together you're on the clock it the chemical reaction begins as soon as you start mixing them together and the two parts touch each other so at that point you are only going to have several minutes in order to get the job done get it molded together kneaded together all mixed right and then applied so I'm really now just pushing all the putty over top of the component to make sure that I really get that shape inside and that the putty is being pushed into all the cracks and crevices so sometimes you know you don't mix quite enough putty because the one thing that I try to really never do is mix too much because then it starts to set up and harden and my mold just doesn't it's a failure so if I you know if I have to mix a little bit more you know I, I just feel like that's okay and that's the case here I didn't have quite enough to finish this part on the top so now I'm just mixing up a little bit more compound a little bit more putty and I'm going to use that now I'm gonna shove a little bit in that little hole just to make sure that you know it, it I, I get putty everywhere that I need to so that when I pull it off you know I have a good mold so I'm filling up that little hole there and then I'm just squeezing a little bit more and you know forming it really nicely and shoving it in and pushing around the edges and patting it and just making sure I really pick up the shape of the, the component that I want to mold so this particular brand of mold making silicone seems to work really well and I've been using this recently the uh, this two part yellow uh, product and what I'll do is I'll leave a link below in the description so that you can find these products and all the products that we're using um, in this video and if I find a product that I that I like even better I'll replace that link with the new product so you know there will be links below in the description for Amazon and stuff and we'll link all these products there so that you can find them if you want to give them a try now our component is basically all done our mold is hard and we're ready to pop it out and release our, our new component from the mold now I'm just gonna basically sort of you know loosen up the edges this component right here this product the silicone you don't need a release agent so I just sort of you know work it until it pops right out and the mold typically is good to make more parts so you can use them over and over again if you find you know the need for a particular part like that All right, we're ready to make our make our mold to make our part here and so what I'm going to use I have my mold that I we that, that we've made and now what I'm going to do is make the actual part what I like to make it out of is I like to make them out of fiberglass so what you're going to do is just follow the directions on the back of the can. I've used this so many times. I sort of just have my, uh, my method here of what I do. Now I, I measured, I pre-measured out how much this container holds in ounces. And this container, I'm just going to use this. This was actually the container that the mold maker compound came in. So I measured this out and it, this carries four ounces all the way to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in three ounces approximately of fiberglass. So I figured three ounces was about there. Then I'm going to take the hardener and the instructions say to go 14 drops per ounce. So first I'm going to put in 14 drops three times. Okay, and then what I tend to do, and I would not suggest you doing this, this is my little thing, but since I'm the one doing this repair, uh, I don't like to mess around and I like to get this job done, so I give it an extra little shot. I mean, I never like go crazy, like, you know what I mean, like four or five shots extra, but, you know, I give it like an extra shot or two, depending on how much I'm making, and... Uh, I've already had not enough hardener and I've done that a couple times and it either doesn't harden or it takes forever and since I do this for a living I time is everything so I'm like I just started always just adding extra and it's it's always been good so never had a problem with it so that's just what I do but again I just you know I'm not trying to teach you how to cheat 
So, you know, you, you follow directions. Only I can cheat. You're not allowed to cheat. So, all right, so you got to stir it really, really, really well. And uh, make sure that the hardener is all kinds of mixed in there. So then you're good and confident that it's thoroughly mixed. This stuff stinks. This is nasty, nasty smelling stuff that gives me a fierce headache if I do this, uh, too much of this indoors, especially once it starts to cure. Okay, so just going to basically pour it in our mold. Hope I have enough. If not, you know, I just mix up another three ounces. I actually have two molds here to fill. So I think that that's, that's good. So uh, basically I'm just going to wait at this point until it hardens and hopefully that's only going to be just, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes or so. And I'll just start to see it. It'll start to, you know, sort of change colors a little bit, sort of get like, a, not change colors, but get kind of just like a haze to it. And it, you know, you can just kind of tell it's drying and then it starts to get really hot. So when this goes through its, when the fiberglass itself goes through its, chemical reaction phase it gets it gets real hot uh, but then it totally hardens sets up and you just will just pop it right out of the mold when it's done so now we just got to give it a little time and we'll see how long uh you know it actually takes for this to cure and to harden for us So, okay, so it hardened, and this took about 15 minutes for it to harden. So we're now ready to remove it from the mold. And all I really do is just kind of, you know, just sort of, you know, pop it at the edges here. Probably the only tricky part. Maybe I should even wait for this a little bit longer. It's still a little soft yet. Normally, this would be ready. But I've got this part right here to, to kind of pop through. And that's going to be a little bit tricky. Everything else is ready. I have to pop this guy right, right through the hole there. I don't want to... I don't want to break it. Maybe I have to just be careful. Oh, there we go. Stop your whining, Rod. Stop your whining. It'll all be fine. And there you go. So that is our, our our piece right here. And now what I want to do is just, you know, sand it. Just do a clean it up, sand it. And so what I made was this, but for the opposite side of the cabinet. So it's actually going to be like this. They're going to go like this. So I'm going to have to... See these little lines right here? I'm going to have to just cut those cut those in place uh, right here. Right? So that's all. But other than that, you know, it'll come out perfect when I, when I go ahead and paint it and finish it. And then I have one other mold, which was a, um, a foot. And same thing. I just got to sand this guy, put him on, and good to go. So, you know, the molds always work great. So I'll go ahead and we'll finish this. And put it on the case and see how it looks.
So for a lot more videos just like this one, don't forget to please subscribe to our channel, uh, like our video, leave a comment below, and check us out on the web at wereefinish.net. Hope you enjoyed the video.